So let me describe the events that took place at the time of the birth of the Internet. Here at UCLA, we had a time-shared computer, which was a scientific data systems, Sigma-7. And it was serving the population of undergraduate and graduate students here, as well as the faculty. Just a computer running time-sharing in the 60s. When we decided to create this network, the idea was to build a switch, which we called an interface message processor. And that was delivered to us on the Labor Day weekend from both Baranek and Newman back in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's the size of a refrigerator. It's what we now call a router. At that time, we called it a packet switch because it was using and implementing the packet switching technology that I had developed as a graduate student at MIT. So on September 2nd, the day after Labor Day, we connected this switch to our Sigma 7, and bits began to flow immediately. Everybody was there that day wondering, will it work? And everybody was ready to point the finger at each other if it didn't. Happily, it worked just fine. Next day, we had messages moving back and forth. So this is UCLA. And the time was September 1969. A month later, up at SRI, Stanford Research Institute, another imp arrived in October. And shortly thereafter, they connected their host computer, which was a PDP machine, program data processor machine, a digital equipment machine, to their imp. So this is Stanford Research Institute, SRI, and the period is October 69. So we decided that we would log on from our machine to their machine. And the idea was we'd sit down as if we were a local user on this machine and log on through the network to that machine. Of course, we needed a communications link. And so the first piece of the backbone network ever on the internet was that line from UCLA to SRI. And so on October 29th, 1969, one of my programmers, Charlie Klein, and I were in this room. We decided to log on to this machine. Now to log on, one has to type in, whoops, let me use another color if I may. One has to type in L O G, and the remote machine will type in, in the IN. So our job had simply was to type in LOG. Now, up at the other end, there was another programmer waiting to watch all of this. And we had a telephone connection between these two. Telephone connection so they could talk to each other. And what happened is, Charlie typed the L. And he asked, you get the L? And the answer was, got the L. He typed the O. You get the O? Got the O. He typed the G. You get the G? Wacko. The system crashed. This machine went down. So the very first message on the internet ever was low, as in lo and behold. You couldn't ask for a better, more effective message. Now. A month later, another imp was delivered to stand to a uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, and they connected their host in, of course. And we had a couple more lines connecting these imps together. And this was in November of '69. And a month after that, a fourth imp was deployed at the University of Utah. 
and they connected their host computer in. So we had, again, this was uh, December 69. So we had a four node network running, and we began to test it and find out what some of the problems were. And we could break this network anytime we wanted. We found faults. We had BBN fix it, etc. So this was the beginning of the internet. You might say that on September 2nd, when this first connection was made, the internet took its first breath of life. And when this message was sent from UCLA to SRI, you might say that the infant internet uttered its first words. The interesting thing is that we did not have a prepared message to send. If you remember that Samuel Morse had a terrific message, What Hath God Wrought? And Alexander Graham Bell had, Come here, Watson, I need you. And Armstrong said, you know, a giant leap for mankind. Those guys were smart. They understood about public relations and media. They had the press. They had TV in the case of where TV was around. They had recordings. And it's, the record is there. We have no record of this. There was no camera. There was no recording. There was nobody present except the few of us doing this simple connection. We do have a written record of it in a log that we kept. And I'd be happy to show you that log, which records that very first message. In this box, we have probably the most precious document regarding the history of the internet. And it contains the original imp log in which we recorded the events that took place in those early days. We started recording this in October. And we have the entries by the programmers and the software developers. And the most important entry in this document is shown right here on October 29th, 1969, at 10.30 in the evening, Charlie Klein put in the entry, talk to SRI host to host. That's the record of that first message, low, that was sent between us and SRI. This is the only document that exists to record the birth of the internet.